Yo, what up YouTube gang? I'm Jay Pats and this week I'm super excited about the video I have because one, we reached a thousand subscribers, so thanks to all of you. As a thank you, I actually just made a drum kit for you guys, so it's like a mini drum kit with a bunch of kick snares and hats that all match and sound good together from some beats I've made. There's some dope little sounds in there, so don't sleep. Download that. I'll leave the link in the description. And then also for the video topic, we're going to be working with my favorite tips that I use in Ableton every time I make beats in there. This one is a little bit more Ableton focused, but some of the things might be able to be applied in your DAW. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. So the first tip is really dope. What it is, is a template. So you could just make templates for your beats that you could load up. So you could have BPM saved in there. You could have MIDI tracks saved, audio tracks, whatever you want, recording tracks, whatever it is. As you can see here, I've made a template for this video. So it has like a piano on it, it has a bass, it has this glide channel and just some things I'm gonna be showing you and a drum rack. All you have to do once you have all the tracks and everything loaded up onto it is just click file and then you could either save it as the template, which is what I've done. So you have this templates folder that you could go into and load up whatever template you want or you can save it as a default template. In the same place, you could save it as the default. Every time you load up Ableton, it's just gonna load up like the BPM or the MIDI track. So tip number two is also very important in my opinion, just for like workflow, and you could do this in any DAW. Having like a drum rack or something similar that has a bunch of sounds already on it. So for me, it's like drum sounds I love having and just having a selection of them because when I'm making a beat, Oftentimes I'll start with the melody and then like I just need drums and sometimes you don't want to spend a whole bunch of time going through all your drum folders like trying to find the perfect sound. So if you just have sounds you rarely mess with, you can create a drum rack that you could load up anytime or just keep it in your template. You see how I have a bunch of different sounds saved from my drum kit. Now if you just click this little save icon down here, it's going to save it in here as a template and you can name it whatever and load it up whenever you want. Also super helpful. All right, so for me, we're just going to name it JPATS Kit Template 1 because it's drums from my first kit. And now every time I just drop that in, it's going to have all the sounds saved over there. And what's really cool about this, this isn't something I just do. Like a lot of big producers do this. For example, if you watch Timbaland streams, you'll see that he just has a giant drum rack too with a bunch of sounds and he's messing with the push, trying to see what works, you know, and not having to waste a bunch of time going to find dope sounds. Tip number three is is having default MIDI tracks. So what I mean by that is every time you open up a MIDI track, it's gonna have certain plugins or whatever on it. For me, every time I open up a MIDI track, I have a sampler on there, I have a spectrum, I have EQ8 and a tuner. Watch, if I do insert MIDI track, it's gonna automatically have all those plugins on that. If you wanna do something similar and have plugins you always use on there, all you have to do is right click the MIDI track over here and then click save as default MIDI track. And every time now that you open up a MIDI track, it's gonna have whatever you had on that track saved. Tip number four is also Ableton 11 exclusive, I believe. What you could do in your MIDI tracks is say this was like 808 or just some sort of one shot. If I wanna do a glide on it, I could get like super accurate and detailed with it. So all you have to do is click this little icon right here it brings up this window and it looks similar, but what you can actually do is like click in and do a glide and you could get very precise. What's super dope is it'll show you like how many semitones it's going up and you could just rarely dial it in and you could do like crazy glide. So instead of just having it go straight up like that, you could have bends in it and yeah, it's crazy. So I think it's definitely one of the best things that Ableton has added in recent years. For tip number five, also super useful. I love doing this when I'm arranging. It's insert time. Basically what you could do is if you have a region of time selected, you could add time in between that. So you don't need to go and like drag everything over and make sure everything's on and you do it right. All you have to do is press command I. Boom. And I could keep doing that. You know, I could, if I just keep pressing command I, it's going to add more and more of that space. So if I select four bars, it'll add four bars. If I select eight bars, it'll add eight bars and so on. 
I love that feature, super useful for ranging, so don't sleep on that. Tip number six is scale highlighting, and I believe this is also exclusive to Ableton 11. But yeah, they have the scale tab now, so if you click scale, you could choose the key, and then you could choose the scale that you want to play in. And that's super dope. Even if you know basic scales, you might want to try something different or just stay in the scales you play in, but not have to think about it too much. Now it's going to go and highlight it here and it could bring out a lot of dope ideas too. Like if you want to, I don't know, mess with a scale you're not familiar with, like Hungarian minor. Boom. Okay, now I've got a new scale I've never played in before. So that could just unlock a lot of creativity as well. Tip number seven, grid shortcut. This is super useful because you could change the note lengths and do things like that very quickly. So if I press command one and two, it's going to shift between the note value. So now it's 164th. If I press command two, 132nd. If I press command two again, 116th and so on. And what you could do is switch between triplets. So if you do command three, turns triplet mode on and off. Then if you don't want any grid, you could also do command four, which turns it off altogether. So now there's no grid and you can see it says off in the bottom right corner. I use this all the time. It's super dope and quick, especially if you're doing like trap hi-hats or something. So let me just show you real quick. So I have these eighth notes right here and I want to do 16 note triplets. So I just go Command one, command three. And then another shortcut I use while using this feature all the time is B. So if you hit B, it's gonna bring up this pen tool and you could just draw stuff in. So that makes it super quick too. And then if you press B again, it turns it off. Yeah, these grid shortcuts, super key and game changing. Tip eight, what we have is just freezing audio and then manipulating it. So I have this melody I've made here. And basically what you could do once it's frozen is go to this beats knob for warp instead of going to complex, which is what a lot of people do. And then just change it to this arrow. For preserve, you do like, I don't know, say we want to do eighth note for this, and then you just bring this knob down. <laughs> Finally, this is a little like two part thing, I guess, is you can easily switch between sampler and simpler tracks just by right clicking at the top of a sampler track and doing simpler. And that's just going to turn it into a simpler track and vice versa. Just little tips that people sleep on that I think are dope. Okay, and then the final tip of this video is if you have a simpler track, you can actually warp and then chop. I've spoke about this in other videos, but a lot of people don't seem to know about this, but I find it super useful, especially for like loop chopping because it'll auto chop for you and then you could just come up with different variations really quickly. So what I mean by that is, say I drop in this hat loop, I could warp it, it picks up that it's two bars, put that on complex, and then I could just go to slice and then you could choose what you want it to slice by. So transient, beat, whatever. And then you could always just adjust chops or delete them if you double click or create new ones if you double click. So definitely a helpful feature. That about wraps up the video of just dope tips and tricks that I love to use all the time in Ableton and I recommend you use them as well. Thanks so much again for the thousand subscribers. Means a lot to me and I just appreciate all of you that are rocking with me. So again, as I said, as a thank you, I created a little mini drum kit for you guys that's completely free. If you wanna cop that, it's down below in the description. If you're new to my channel, if there was any helpful content in this video, please don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell because it really just helps out my channel and kind of just keeps me motivated to keep on making videos for you guys and sharing my knowledge. Thanks for tapping in. I'm Jay Pats. Peace.